Welcome back. So now that we have a Firebase project ready to, to run, we're going to next try and get it into our Angular app. So we need the connection, right, to kind of start working with Firebase from our Angular app and start communicating. Now the cool thing is that Angular Fire 2, this project right here, has been built for exactly that purpose. So it's very easy to get started with, with Firebase and Angular, and you can get up and running with a full featured project and just start building your domain logic like that, right? And if you're actually good at writing your code, it would be pretty easy to switch between a Firebase backend, a Java backend if you wanted to, or maybe even a .NET Core backend, whatever you want to do, because we will put everything that we need to communicate with the backend, we're going to put that in services, so it's easy to kind of switch those out later on. It's amazing stuff. So let's try and scroll down a little bit right here and uh, try and figure out how we can actually get going with talking between Firebase and Angular. So let's just scroll down right here. Now, here you can see that uh, to do this, we need to kind of do an installation of the Firebase and Angular Fire right here inside our system. And now we've done npm installs before, but I just want to scroll down a little further because there's actually an installation and setup guide right here. So go and click that one and then you just follow the steps. Step one, install Angular CLI. We already have that. Create a project. We already have that. Set up your test, blah, blah, blah. We already have that. Now we can install Angular Fire and uh, Firebase. So let's try and do that actually. So I'm jumping into my console right here. Let's just open a new terminal down here. I'll just keep the project running. I don't have to shut that down. I'll run the npm command to explain that I want to install Firebase, which is actually the Firebase JavaScript file provided by Firebase. And then Angular Fire is kind of a wrapper that can talk to that Firebase file through Angular uh, code, right? So it would be TypeScript code that we're working with. There we go. Both seems to be installed. And uh, let's just try and actually go back to the guide and see what we have to do next. Now the next step is to actually add some information right here about the Firebase uh, setup that we have. So I need to kind of put in my project information right here in the environment file. Now this code needs to be hidden, secret. You shouldn't share this on an open GitHub account, just to let you know I'm going to do it, but I don't care because I'm going to shut down that project later and I don't care about security with this project, but this code right here should never be shared with the world. This is something you need to hide, and if you put this on a GitHub repository, you'll end up getting warnings from GitHub saying, are you sure you wanna share this with people outside? Um, so at a minimum, you need to share this inside a private repository on your so server hidden behind the cloud. And GitHub actually also provide ways so you can build private repos up there if you wanna actually save this from the world. But we need something like this. I need something new in my environment file that kind of explains where I can actually use this, uh, where the Firebase project resides. So let's try and jump back to our code. Now you have your environment already set up down here in environments. You have two environment files, one for development and one from production, right? So we'll just, in the development environment for now, we'll just add this link right here, or sorry, this code right here that I just copied. It says I wanna use this for Firebase. And then there's a lot of information right here that you of course need to switch with the information from your project. Now to get to that point, you'll go, jump back to Firebase. I'll just jump up here again. I'll go into the root of my project with the project overview. Um, and I'll click this small, this is for web, this is for Android, this is for iOS. I'll click this small web icon and here I have all the information that I need to kind of start using Firebase. Now here you can see there's a JavaScript file for Firebase. That's actually the one, we don't need to put this in anywhere because we already have that with the npm command because we wrote, again, we wrote two things in the npm command, both um, Angular, which is the, combined, uh, the, the actual Angular part of Firebase that we are going to use, and then we wrote Firebase. Now this is the JavaScript file that they want you to pull in right here as a script. You don't have to do that. You just need this code right here. You just need the API keys and stuff like that. So I'm just going to copy all of this right here and I'm going to paste that into this Firebase part in the environment, Bajumi, there we go. And I'll just change all of these quickly into actually being single quotation so TSLint doesn't complain. There we go, now it looks better. And again, don't share this with the world. I will destroy this project later, so it might not be available with this key right here. So you have to go and create your own Firebase account, and then you get a key like this, your own project, and then you just paste that in, and you're up and running with the project I'm building right here, out of the box. You don't have to make any changes, you just have to do the steps I just did. So it's, it's really not hard to get going uh, with a new Firebase setup. So we're actually ready to start using Firebase now, but I want to make a few more changes before we actually start using it. Um, we could start actually just initializing the app and start calling in some of these modules, but let's start doing it in the next couple of videos because I want to kind of make a few more changes before we actually jump into this. So that's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.